when you got a question, raise your hand. We'll uh, bring a mic around. Just wait for the mic for our transcription purposes. Um, and just identify for your first question. Don't have to be a, don't have to do this for everyone, but just name an affiliation for your first question. Um, specific student athletes, again, for our purposes, if you guys got one for everybody, that's fine. But to start, uh, direct your question to a specific student athlete. Formatics here will open with, if he wants, David to make an opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions just for the student athletes. Then we'll dismiss them, and then we'll open the floor for questions for Coach Richmond. Uh, in terms of locker room access, how it's going to go for this one and after the Arizona State-St. John's game, once the winning team is up here, their locker room is open for 30 minutes as soon as they're up here on the dais. Once they're dismissed, and once the head coach is dismissed, then we're looking at the loser's locker room being open for 30 minutes from that point on. Um, and that's it. They'll come up here too. We just do winners first because they got to catch a flight. <clears throat> All right, we're now being joined by the head coach of North Dakota State, David Richmond, as well as student athletes for the Bison, Vinny Shahid, Sam Griesel, Jared Samuelson, and Tyson Ward. Uh, David, if you like, you can start with an opening statement. Yeah, thank you. Obviously, um, a ton of credit to Coach Moten and his staff. Um, they came out, they had a great, great game plan, and um, we got up 13, and they never quit. And it's March. We knew it wasn't going to be easy, and, and they certainly didn't let it uh, be easy for us, too. But extremely proud of our guys' resolve, and it's March. We're excited to keep dancing. Questions for the student athletes only, right here on the right. Vinny, hi, Chip Scoggins from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. How much do you think the, the schedule that you guys played this year and the situations you've been in helped you when they made that run in the second half to kind of keep your poise? Uh, it helped us a lot. Uh, you know, early in the season, we played a lot of teams that pressured like that, um, that a lot of teams that had some athletes like that. Um, and earlier in the year, uh, when teams made a run that were athletic and pressured like that, we kind of crumbled. Um, as you can see, we've grown up a little bit. Um, and I think that, that playing those teams early on helped us a lot. Right here on the left. Fargo. Uh, Tyson, you had eight of your 23 in the last four minutes or so. What did you see? Did you feel like you had something going there? Um, you know, my teammates found me in the right spot um, in, in the block area. And we've had some success in the past and with me in that spot. And, you know, my teammates did a great job of uh, giving me the ball and uh, just letting me create. Right here on the right. Josh Swanson, KFGO Fargo. Sam, about 3.56 left. You knocked down that big three to tie the game. What did you see on that play and uh, talk about it? Uh, Tyson got it in the post, and uh, my defender was helping off pretty far. And Tyson gave me a perfect pass, and I just uh, stroked it. Here on the right. Yep, uh, Tyson, on, on that spin move, had you been setting him up for that move, or take us through that, that play there? Did you get him on the baseline? Uh, it just it just happens. Uh, it just felt felt him, and uh, <clears throat> just felt felt like doing the move. Chase Miller, Chase Miller with seven uh, forty. The fan. This is for Jared. Jared, can you just talk about the grit and what it took to you know get this second ever school win in NCAA tournament history and just close out this game at the free throw line as well? 
Uh, yeah, first and foremost, just want to thank God, man. I mean, this is a great opportunity and blessing and all from him. Um, but, I mean, it was just, you know, a team effort. And um, these guys, we've really come together this season um, through ups and downs. And, I mean, like Coach said, it's March. Anything can happen. It um, takes toughness to get those wins. We got it done. Here on the left. This is for any, or any of you or all four of you. Okay, now you can talk about Duke. Your thoughts on playing a team like Duke? Jared, can you answer that first? Um, obviously, a good team. Um, and we're, we're, re we're ready for the challenge, ready to go compete. Um, we're going to enjoy this one for a little bit, but uh, we're ready to go get it. Right here. They hit the glass uh, a lot. How, how difficult was it to keep them off the backboard? And do you think the game started to change there in the second half when they started uh, getting some offensive rebounds? Sam, can you answer that, please? Um, yeah, like you said, they're really they're a really physical and athletic team, um, and at times um, we struggled with getting some some defensive rebounds. But down the stretch, we came up with some big ones, um, and that was that was key for us to get this win. Uh, Benny, can you just talk about the unselfishness of this team? How it just continued from you know the regular season here in the summer league tournament now into Dayton, and how just this team has kind of grown from you know day one. Uh, you know, we talk about it a lot. Um, one of the things that coach says all the time is it's amazing what can happen when no one cares who gets the credit. Um, and you can see that throughout this team. I mean, we share the ball so well, and um, our teammate's success leads to our happiness. Like, if Tyson does something well, you see everybody on the bench smiling, and that's vice versa for everybody. So I think it's really good, and I think it's very contagious throughout our team. Aaron Wright. Uh, Michael Uh It was for any of you to start with Vinny, perhaps. At this point in time now, it's 16 versus 1. Does what UMBC did last year now mean anything to you guys? Is it, is it something you keep in mind as you get ready to play next game? Uh, you know, we don't really think about that too much. Um, 16 versus 1, 2 versus 3, doesn't really matter to us. We're going out there to compete. Sam? Um, I mean, he kind of hit the spot with that one, and I would agree completely. <laughs> Jared? <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, whoever we play, whenever we play them, um, Wherever we play, I mean, we just got to go compete and, and be ready to go. Tyson? What Jared said and what Vinny said. <laughs> Any further questions? Yeah, sure, right here on the left. Are you guys excited to play a Duke, a team like that, a program like that? Yeah. Tyson? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, just, um, I mean, it's a, it's a great team. You always want to play the best. So, uh, you know, chalk it up, and we'll see what happens. Any further questions? Vinny, Sam, Jared, and Tyson, thank you for your time. Good luck against Duke. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll open the floor for questions uh, for Coach Richmond right here on the right. Uh, Chip Skygans from the Star Tribune in Minneapolis. Can you uh, <clears throat> maybe expound on the, the impact Vinny's had on your program this year? I don't know if I have enough time. You know, you guys saw how talented a player he is for 40 minutes. What, what you don't see is the uh, infectious personality he has in the locker room. Um, at the 6 a.m. You know, lifting sessions, uh, he is a – he's why you coach. He really is. And, and when you can say some things and then he can take it and, and spin it into a player's perspective from me, um, he is, he's been – He's been an absolute pleasure and a breath of fresh air for me, and he's what's right about the game. And, and, and so much of it isn't because of any shot he makes or pass he makes or stop he gets. It's just his lease on life, the joy and spirit that he, he comes every day with. Uh, named him captain before he ever played a game? Yeah, before he ever, I mean, it was maybe like six weeks on the campus. Is that just based off of off-season workouts? That yes, thing? yeah, absolutely. And, um, and it, it didn't surprise any of us. It really didn't. Him, and it's great, too. You got Jared, who doesn't say boo, uh, leads by example. And you got Vinny, who there's times you got to tell him to shut up. And, <laughs> and it's, a, it's a great balance. And, um, I mean, you're right. I mean, you just think about that. The kid walked into campus, and two months later, his teammates are um, – but naming him captain, again, to my point, I mean, he hadn't even played a game. You know, you saw the talent. You don't see what goes on behind the scenes with him. You're in right. Josh, well, it's a KFG. Coach, you had mentioned at the Summit League tournament <clears throat> that earlier in the year, the Bison don't find a way to win games like this. And now with the Summit League tournament and tonight, what is it about these guys where something changed and, and they've been able to put it together and come away with wins in games like this? Yeah, I mean, the game 
Josh, that keeps going back to my head is that at Denver, you know, we're up six at half. We, we score out of the half. We're up eight. And then we just couldn't hang on. I mean, we didn't have the poise at that time. And I think the biggest thing with this group, and I've said it countless times, is experience. And you can talk to this group about things. You can show this group about things. And it just never really resonates until they actually go through it. And, and if you look at the course of our season, every experience that we've had, good, bad, or indifferent, they've learned from it, they've grown from it, and they're better for it. Here in the left in the back. Dan Murphy, ESPN. How are you feeling about Duke and game planning for those guys on about 48 hours notice at this point? You know, I, we're excited. We are. We're like to their guys' point. It, you know, we're excited that it's Duke. We're excited to be playing. So whoever it was, it, this is March, and um, just like North Carolina Central, there's really good teams in the NCAA tournament, and, and Duke is a really good team. Um, and we've got to turn our guys around, enjoy this for a little bit, and, and prepare for Friday night. Turn left. Dave, on the, on the same realm, um, not only are you playing a great program. But you're going to be in a national spotlight, CBS, all that. What does that mean, that kind of exposure mean for your program? We talk in our program, Kevin, all the time about servant leadership. And this is a great example for us to, uh, you know, when, when you make others better around you, which we have an opportunity to showcase our great university, our excellent community, um, just the people of the Red River Valley and the upper Midwest and North Dakota, it's a great stage. And, and we get that opportunity to represent them. And I know our kids will do it in the right way. They'll compete and, and, and they'll fight to um, the better end. You're in the right. Hey, Dave, what, what does a second win in, in the NCAA tournament uh, represent for this squad, you know, in the NCAA tournament school history, just coming to Dayton here and picking up that second one? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really neat. It's really cool. You think about it in, a, in so many ways. This is the 11th year of Division I eligibility. We're still in so many ways in our infancy. And to have the success, you know, to be in four, to now have two wins in the NCAA tournament, it's a, it's a credit to a great bunch of guys, uh, a terrific leadership, administration. Uh, when, when we made the jump, it wasn't about just switching to Roman numeral. It was about to continue to compete for championships. And uh, we were able to do that. And our, our, our leadership now understands that. They continue to build facilities and the resources and those things. And it, it's a, there's expectations at North Dakota State. Um, but it's a great place, and, and when you have those expectations and people support you, you can do these things in March. You're all right. Coach, you guys played Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago in Seattle, played them pretty close. What do you tell these guys, a really young team, about taking on a team like Duke, prime time Friday night, and uh, the feature game on national TV? Yeah, I bet I've said it a million times in the last 10 days, two weeks. Just stay in the moment. You know, and, and stay in the moment is right now. Enjoy this one. Uh, Friday night when it tips, that moment is, are you going to jump to a gap? Are you going to make your hit on a box out? Are you going to stick your follow through? Stay in the moment and, and enjoy it and smile. It, you know, I told the guys this, and I think I caught them off guard a little bit. Uh, you, got, you don't deserve to be in the NCAA tournament. You earn the right to be in the NCAA tournament. And because of the experiences, our guys have earned the right to, to be on a national stage against a really good program Friday night. Got time for two more. One. Talk about Tyson down the stretch and your free throw shooting down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Tyson was just terrific. And, and to be honest with you, when, when they went on that run, Tyson wasn't in there, too. And I think you can, you can attack pressure a lot of different ways. Um, and, and you can do it with good ball handlers, which we have. But also, when you touch the post like that, uh, and we have shooters that we do around him. It's been a pretty effective recipe for us, you know, down the stretch. And I thought that was key. You're right, Kevin, to make free throws, something that we've uh, pretty much done all year. We've been in the top 10 at times, top 20 in the country, and, and to get rewarded. It, you know, when you, again, when you're this time of year, it's going to be a lower, it's going to come down to possession here, possession there. And those free throws, every one of them is crucial. Last one here on the right. Dave, how much time do you get to enjoy this? How much time are you going to let the players enjoy this before you get on a bird and get to South Carolina? Yeah, so we got a student director of basketball operations, Spencer Wilker, and, and he's going to earn every penny he's making right now, too. So we're going to make sure and enjoy this. Make no mistake about it. Uh, we'll get to South Carolina, get the fellas some rest, and, and start preparing and um, look forward to, to competing on Friday night. David, thank you. Good luck against Duke. Thank you.
What's that? Straight down the tunnel, and that door that's at the bottom just before you get to the floor, take a left through that door. Thank you. Now being joined by the head coach of NC Central, Lavelle Moten, as well as uh, student athletes Larry McKnight and Rashawn Davis. Uh, Lavelle, if you'd like, you may start with an opening statement. Um, obviously, it didn't end the way we wanted it to. Extremely proud of our guys. Thought we got into some adverse situations, and we showed our toughness. We fought, and we fought, and we fought some more. Unfortunately, with two minutes left, we just didn't make the plays that were required, you know, to win a basketball game of this magnitude. And that has nothing to do with them. It's everything to do with me. And uh, I told them that. But hats off to North Dakota State. Um, they played. They made significant plays at significant times. And um, we just came up short. Questions for Larry and Rashawn only. Here on the right, the left. It's Dan Murphy, ESPN. What do you take away from the, the, the final stretch there, making that last run? Um, and how do you kind of reflect back on the season now that's over? Uh, Larry, can you take that first, please? Um, I would have to say um, that final stretch, it, was, um, it came down to the wire. Our margin error is supposed to be, supposed to be limited. And we made a couple of errors at the end that put us in the, put us in the back end. But reflect on the season, I mean, it was a good, really good season. We've, we've been. We've been talked about all season. Um, people doubted us. We we stuck together. We got everything we accomplished, and um, I think it was a great season. Sean, uh, I just want to start out by saying like I enjoyed this year. Um, I never forget my brothers, and um, um, I really can't say too much right now. But it's been a wonderful year. Your left. For well, Larry, we make the three. You guys go up 66, 61. Um, how did you, how did you feel at that moment that things were going to you guys' favor? Did you feel like you had them right where you wanted them? Um, yeah, I thought we did. Um, I thought we had the game. To be honest, um, when, I, when those threes were coming in, of going in, um, everything felt good. I felt like we had them. We were right where we needed to be, but it just came up short at the end. Turn left again. The the foul call there at the end that, uh, on the defensive end. They called it on you. There were you. Did, you, did they say anything to you? Did you ask them what did he see? The referee uh, after he blew the whistle. Um, he didn't really don't say anything to me. Um, I think I was in the right position at the right time. It was just he made the right call, I guess. Any further questions? All right, Larry and Rashawn, thank you for your time. Good luck on, uh, congratulations on your season. I will open the floor for uh, questions for Coach Moten at this point. Turn left. Coach, um, when I when I asked Larry about the call there, I saw you, you shake your head a little bit. Did the ref say anything to you? Did you ask him what he saw on that on that play? Nah, we don't we don't get explanations, man. Um, if you want me to be completely honest with you, I tell our team every game we're, we're down 10, um, especially in games of these, this magnitude. It doesn't seem as if um, we're accustomed to getting a whistle or anything, so we just play through it. Our practices, I don't even call fouls in practice for this reason whatsoever. I would like for the game to be decided um, by the players, and we don't have to ask questions, you know, concerning referees. But 
you know, they're human too. And, um, you know, even though we didn't agree with it, you know, such is life. We've been here before so many times, man. Like, it's... These kids fight their heart out. You just want them to decide the game. That's that's pretty much it. This one seems like to you it's things a little bit more than the previous two. Is it because in that last few minutes you guys seem to have have your foot on the pedal or in control? All of them hurt. I just hurt for the kids, man. Like. Y'all see the basketball, but, you know, it's 22 hours of life that we're responsible for as coaches. And these two kids, man, along with the rest of my seniors, they're incredible kids. And they become your children. And you love them. And just like anything for your kids, you don't want to see them hurting. And just the mere fact that it's their last game, and I had an opportunity to help them through that, and I don't know if I did my very best, and they're questioning if they did their very best. You just don't want them to hurt. And these kids are incredible students. They're gonna graduate. They come to my house, they steal my kids' fruit snacks, and just incredible. They're part of our family, man. And for it to be over with, it hurts, it stings. And that's a harsh reality that we never wanted to embrace. But here it is, and I'm extremely proud of them for the year that they had. And left again. What would you tell them at, at halftime? I mean, I know you're, you're, you're good for motivating your team and making the adjustments, but they came out clicking after being down by like 13 in the second half. What would yeah. you tell them to get them fired up and get them going? Um, they were different um, than – than normal. That, that team is somewhat of an anomaly than what you'll normally see. Um, and what I mean by that is they have a stretch five. Most teams have a stretch four. Um, and they have incredible shooters surrounded the perimeter. So the paint is always going to be open. And we drill, shell drill every single day. For this game, you just had to detox everything that you've learned in your North Carolina Central career and stick to the scouting report. And I don't think we did a good job of doing that. I think they had seven threes in the first 11 minutes. And I said, listen, man, the scouting reporters don't help off these kids. And we calmed it down. I thought what really hurt us in the first half, Sean got two, and we didn't finish the half well. They, I think they went on a 6-0 run to close the half, and they went up 40 to 34, and that gave them a little bit of breathing room and cushion. In the second half, we didn't start to have um, the way we're capable of. And I think we got down 10 or 12. And I just told them, don't look at the score anymore. Let's do what we do. And let's just fight. Let's just fight for your teammate. Fight for your brother. Fight for your last name. Have pride in what you do. And just fight. And great things will happen. But it had to come with stops on the defensive end. And once we got some stops on the defensive end, we were able to manufacture some points in transition and get ourselves back in the game. Got time for one more question. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Last one here on the left. The old motion you're showing earlier, I mean, does that ever get easier as a head coach? Or um, how, how do you kind of deal with that? And I'm not like this. Nah, it sucks, man. Um, my grandmother told me something when I was young, and I'll, I'll never forget it. And it's the realest thing I've ever heard in my life. She always told me the same thing that makes you laugh will make you cry. The exact same thing. And last week, we were crying tears of joy, but this week we're crying tears of sorrow. Um, and not because we didn't perform our best, but because it's over. And, you know, I got a locker room full of seniors that I feel for. Then it, it's really like a funeral home in there right now. And as a coach, you think you have all these cliches and you can find the right words to touch them and lift their spirits, but it was nothing I could say in that moment. And. That's the harsh reality that you got to deal with. And unfortunately, um, in this tournament, 64 more of the teams is going to feel our exact way. You know, so it's no fun. Everyone is going to end their season with a loss except for one team. And that's the harsh reality. And no one wants to feel that. But 
you know, we, we win with class and we lose with class and um, we can accept it. And hats off to North Dakota State. That's a, that's a damn good basketball team. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.